So we're in Thomas Jefferson's garden. This was managed by his slaves. That brick structure in the middle marks the halfway point between the gardens, so it extends 500 feet each direction. It's a pretty big garden. It's a south-facing hill, so it gets maximum amount of sunlight for the growing season. And it's a beautiful view out there. It's a beautiful place for a garden. I have sunflowers blooming. There was an asparagus, asparagus bed all the way at the other end. He loved his asparagus. So this is the halfway mark. So we're taking a walk in the garden that goes around this Nicotiana. Smell it. Should smell good. Mm -hmm. Smells good at night. Snapdragons. This is the cypress vine. Sweet peas. Mm. big because this is going to hold the asparagus bean. Okay, that long bean, asparagus bean. You guys are welcome to go down into the orchards, the vineyards. Uh, there, there's a stairway that will come up by the nursery, kind of by, by that um, where his uh, uh, 
vines were. And everyone, um, there's a stairway that goes down over here. Um, further down, she's got, I think, more of the flax planted, so maybe some tobacco. You have to go take a look. A lot of times she does uh, field crops down there, so just so we can see what they look like. Right up there was the gate for that 10-foot paling fence because it goes right to the kitchen, everyone. So that's where all the food would have gone in Jefferson's day, right? I don't like it. What is that door? You gonna go look at it? There, that's a wasp nest right there. Right there. No, I don't want to get in trouble. They planted stuff. Yeah. It's interesting that the grapes don't do well here. Well, there's some grapes. Still green. Look at all those little grapes. Some of the grapes at Monticello. Ooh, slipped. The orchard looks like. There's some berry bushes over there. There's the view from the bottom. Very beautiful.
some beautiful fruit on that. There's a shuttle bus coming up to the house from the visitor center. Some apples. These are his figs. Some berry bushes around here. You can smell the figs in the air. I remember when we went to Italy and Greece, you can smell the figs in the air. They have a certain fragrance. Oh, there's little figs. Here. Right there. That's exciting. Some more grapes, although these are all almost bare. The trellises. He tried to have his own vineyard, but grapes just don't grow here in Virginia, I guess, something in the soil. That's his fig orchard here. Whew. It is hot today. Enjoying the shade. Tree, though. Now, I can show you something really different though. Right behind me. A thousand foot long terrace garden. That's really different. That's extraordinary. Why does Jefferson have a terrace garden? Mind you, it takes three years to dig. And there is a fantastic retaining wall. If you, if you get a chance to go down there, look over the edge. That retaining wall is extraordinary. It's 12 foot high it's at its highest point. Well, this is really fascinating. That's the southern slope of the mountain. So when you make a terrace on the southern slope, it traps the hot air. And it's fascinating to watch because when we get the first frost of the year, two months later on the terrace, it greatly extends the growing season. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jefferson, he's experiment. It's a laboratory for Jefferson, again, a and man of the Enlightenment. He uh, experimented with hundreds of varieties of seeds, plants. And um, you can look online and see his garden memorandum book. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet. He's logging the day seeds were planted, how long they took to grow, what they tasted like a table. Yeah, very, very much an enlightenment exercise. Uh, beyond the garden, an eight acre orchard, 300 trees. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's a vineyard right down there. Uh, Jefferson, very interested in being in the winemaking business. He tries for seven seasons to grow grape, but um, very unsuccessful in those attempts. And then beyond the vineyard are berry patches. Of course, all the land tended to by the enslaved, uh, including one person in particular. His name was Wormley Hughes. He was the grandson of Elizabeth Hemingway, born right here on this mountain. And he is often referred to as the head enslaved gardener at Monticello. And so you look at Jefferson's correspondence, especially when he's serving as president and he's writing all these instructions home. And these letters are full of references to Wormley Hughes. Wormley Hughes will do this. Uh, tell Wormley Hughes to do that. He knows how to do this, that, and the other. And he also is responsible for the beautiful ornamental garden on the, on the West Lawn. He, he worked on that quite a bit.